carbohydrates particularly the classification of the carbohydrates now the classification is a very basic and a very simple topic but at the same time it is very important and it very frequently lands up in your exam so you can think of it as easy uh, four or eight marks that you can get if you have a good grasp on the classification of the carbohydrates so let's start with the classification of the carbohydrates okay so first what do you mean by uh, carbohydrates as the name tells you as the name says it is hydrates of carbon the name itself tells us carbon and hydrates so when you look at the formula of the carbohydrates it can be described as cn h2 n meaning for every carbon we have a corresponding water molecule and therefore the molecule is known as the hydrate of carbon or the carbohydrates now this being very simplistic uh, as per the chemical nature but when you examine the carbohydrates particularly in detail we find they can be easily grouped under three simple headings so we can group them under three simple headings the first one being the monosaccharides now what do you mean by monosaccharides monosaccharides would be molecules where we have only one functional group the functional group as you know in the carbohydrates is either the aldehydes or they are the keto groups so the hydrates of carbon having only one of these groups would be known as the monosaccharides all right so if the aldehyde is a functional group we call them aldose and if the keto group is the functional group we call them ketos so monosaccharides can be aldose or they can be ketos very simple now in addition to this in addition to this the number of carbon in the different monosaccharides is also different you can have two three carbons you can have four carbons five six seven so based on that distinction monosaccharides can be further labeled as trios obviously they have three carbon then we can have the tetros tetros will have the four carbon the pentos having Five carbon, the hexose having six carbon, and the heptose having the seven carbon. So, two things that uh, we can use for labeling the monosaccharides what type of functional group is there? If the aldehyde is there, we call them aldose. If the keto group is there, we we'll call them ketose. Depending on number of carbon, we can call them triose, tetrose, pentose, hexose, or heptose. For example, if I tell you that the molecule that you have is glucose, how do you describe the nature of glucose? Now, glucose has a functional group aldehyde, so it will be a aldose. It has six carbon, so it is a hexose. So we call the glucose as aldohexose. All right, aldehyde is a functional group. Number of carbon is six, so that's hexose. Similarly, if I talk about fructose. In that case, how do you describe it? The fructose would be ketohexose. Here the functional group is keto group and it has six carbon. So this is how we describe the monosaccharides. They can be aldoses, they can be ketoses, and depending on number of carbons, they can have different names. Please note if you try to break the monosaccharides into two parts, the functional group will go to only one of them. So both the parts cannot be carbohydrates. This is another property of the monosaccharides. If you split them, you are not going to get two carbohydrates. You will get only one simpler carbohydrate, if at all. So the monosaccharides are carbohydrates having a single functional group, which cannot be split into multiple simple uh, sugars. Okay. So the monosaccharides have one other important property which you have to keep in mind 
all monosaccharides are described as reducing sugars and they have a reducing nature now what do you mean by reducing nature what do you mean when i say the reducing nature so please note here the reducing nature means positive result with benedict's test when you perform the Bendick test with a solution of the substance and you're getting a positive result that is called the reducing nature or a reducing a sugar so reducing nature means you'll get a positive result with Bendick test you'll get the positive result with the Bendick test Bendick test uses the Benedict's reagent All right so this is one very very important property of the monosaccharides all monosaccharides are reducing in nature all monosaccharides are reducing in nature so that was about the monosaccharides let us quickly now talk about the second subgroup the second subgroup being the oligosaccharides now the oligosaccharides have two to nine residues of monosaccharides the oligosaccharide will have two to nine residues of the monosaccharides now depending on the number of residues which are there they can be further labeled as the disaccharides the trisaccharides the tetrasaccharides and so on and so forth till you reach the uh, nine residues in the molecule among all the subtypes of the oligosaccharides we specifically talk about the disaccharides we specifically talk about the disaccharides why they are very very common they are very very common and we have specific enzymes for the metabolism of the disaccharides one very important thing about the disaccharides is that some of them are reducing in nature and some of them are non-reducing in nature so they can be of both types reducing as well as non-reducing we are talking about the disaccharides now there are some very important and common disaccharides that you should know about let's quickly take a look at the important disaccharides that you must know about so we are briefly looking at some of the important disaccharides all right the most common most important disaccharide that you must know about is the lactose you know that the lactose is present in the milk and therefore it is commonly known as the milk sugar because it is in the milk we call it the milk sugar now this lactose because the disaccharide will contain two monosaccharides so the two monosaccharides present in the lactose are glucose and galactose all of you know this the two monosaccharides in the lactose are glucose and galactose both of them have the aldehyde as functional group therefore the functional group in glucose also present at carbon 1 in galactose also present at carbon 1 now when these two are joining together the bond typically forms between carbon 1 at one end and carbon 4 at the other end all right so what happens when the glucose and galactose are joining together to form the lactose one of the functional group remains free and it is a functional group which is giving us the positive reaction with the Bendick reagent because one of the functional group remains free the lactose is reducing in nature so the lactose will be a reducing sugar 
the lactose will be a reduced in sugar because one of the functional groups is free when the lactose is formed by joining together of the two monosaccharides now for metabolizing the lactose in our intestine we have a very specific enzyme known by the name lactase lactase enzyme which will digest or break down the lactose into the constituent monosaccharides unfortunately there are some patients where the lactase enzyme is not being produced so the condition is known as lactase deficiency and it presents as the presentation is of lactose intolerance the presence is of lactose intolerance means when these individuals will consume the lactose because they are not able to digest it it will reach the large intestine where it will be acting as the fuel for the gut flora and the gut flora will digest it very fast rapidly so to produce a lot of alcohol and gases are produced so you will have the bloating sensation you will have flatulence you will have abdominal cramps you can also have the vomiting etc diarrhea can be there because of this uh, uh, altered metabolism of lactose in our body so what you have to note in lactose intolerance all the signs and symptom of GI disturbance are there because the lactose cannot be completely metabolized by the gut bacteria we find reducing substance in stool please note in lactose intolerance the lactose is not getting absorbed it is not in the blood so it is not going to come in the urine what is happening it is not getting digested